I just love Ginger. Oh, it is. And you know, her. Ginger used to look just like oh, that. Oh, she did when not. When I dated she was, her, she, she was, was tiny. Much, yeah. <laughs> I'm using fresh ginger today, too. Is that so? I am. It's mm. true. Yeah. Dear Mr. Blind, Mr. Johnson. Whoa. This is from some, and I'm quoting from the letter, old lady in Richmond, Virginia. The well, it's chili, so sweet that she wrote to the us. The chili and cornbread look delicious. However, I am pleased. I did not have to eat your cooking. While chopping onions, Mr. Johnson stated he was nervous about using the surface for chopping as to the cleanliness. Wake up, guys, and be aware of bacteria. At the beginning of the feature, Mr. Bly commented about his swollen face, <laughs> rubbing his hands all over his face and neck, and then his hair. Mr. Johnson then commented about his unhappiness of his haircut, rubbing his hand over his hair. Uh, his, uh, without hand washing, the food prep began. Did you guys plan to do this to bug clean cooking, uh, old ladies like me? Well, if you did, it worked. Oh, honey, give it up. <laughs> <laughs> Let me have that for a Here. personal yeah, response. And I'll, and I'll, I'll give you the envelope. First of all, too. we're not cooking for a restaurant. We only cook for each other. That's right. It is a comedy cooking show. But being that it does concern you terribly, Hygiene being as important as it Absolutely. is. Absolutely. We have decided that just for you, sweet cheeks, just for you, baby. There, I hope you're happy. <laughs> How long do you think your head can stay fresh in there? I don't know, but I'm worried about this lady. I think she needs some serious therapy. Because she, she does go on at some considerable length. I didn't read all of it. Bless your heart, darling. <laughs> but we are cooking for ourselves and our extended family here in the station. None of this will be purveyed out on the sidewalk, <laughs> even though they would like us to do that from time to time. But in any event... And you uh, know what I always tell people when I say, do you what? eat that stuff? I always say, well, of course we do, and we have never lost a single customer. <laughs> no. We really have. All right. Where's that witch yeah, at? We need to get going because we got a lot to these do today. Recipes are, oh, she's a little dizzy today. She went right past Darn. us. Give it up. Dear Fat Boys and Doris, who's also getting pudgy, why do you keep cooking and eating all that meat and oil? Yeah. None of it could be good for you. Let's have something vegetarian, which would be a lot better for you three butterballs, okay? And it's signed Ramona Leadbelly of Lard, Ohio. Well, Ramona, today is your day. Just so happens I'm going to do curried butternut squash soup, and it goes on forever. And I am doing one of the most despicable, hateful <laughs> recipes I have ever done on this show. And the only reason I'm doing it, the programming people know that I absolutely despise dried beans. <laughs> I hate them with a passion. I like green beans. I like green peas but I do not care for dried pinto beans or all that mess. And today, we're doing one with chichi beans, which are better known in every other part of the United States as garbanzo beans or chickpeas. Oh, and the lovely Miss uh, Thang will be by in a little while, a little Miss Pudgy Wudgy Doris. <laughs> Colonial corn custard. Wouldn't you know she'd be bringing in the corn custard. Well, this curried butternut squash, you get started just real quick. What you do is you take uh, two and a half uh, pounds, or about two pounds of butternut squash, and you cut them in half, and when you cut them in half, you take a big old spoon and scoop out all those seeds and all that other stuff out of there. And then you lay them down in a baking dish, like so, and put about a quarter of an inch of water in there, and it'll take two of them. That's about two pounds, two and a half pounds, because I weighed them. And uh, you bake them at 400 hot degrees for about 45 minutes, and then you take it out. And when they cool, just a little as these have, as you can see, they have cooled considerably, then you scoop all of this out, and you put it into a food processor where we're going to process it for about 30 seconds. So I'm going to take all that and scoop it out and put it in there. As you can see, it's just wonderful. And later on, this makes the perfect telephone. When you get finished, it makes a wonderful phone. So anyway, I'm going to do this. Johnson, hit it. All right. I have just sliced uh, a big yellow onion, like a big yellow school bus. This is a big yellow onion. And I've got two or three. I'm using three because they're small cloves of garlic. 
and I'm going to chop those up and I'm going to saute them until the onions are transparent in two tablespoons of olive oil. So we're using oil of the young olives and it's a real nice one and there we go, we got all of this chopped now and we're gonna put it over here into the oil, which I hope is hot, but we'll see. That woman has made me severely nervous. <laughs> well, just don't touch anything. <laughs> all right, now, now let's see, I think I'll use it. Maybe I'd better turn up the heat a little bit. And this is going to saute before we, Put the other stuff in. I brought these in so people could see. This is dried garbanzo beans here in my paw. If you can see them. Of course, you could have just bought there them they are. with already done. You could have bought, you probably need about four cans of already cooked ones. But I think people that use garbanzo beans are going to want to either have them fresh out of the garden or they're going to insist on soaking these and cooking them the long way. I need to process this stuff for 30 seconds. So that's what I'm doing right now. Go ahead, Johnson. Hello, Johnson. Come what? in. Come in. Oh, I don't want to come in. I can't, I'm afraid the pe people won't be able to hear me over the noise of that processor. Well, I have to process this. Well, it's turning into more. a real pretty color. What? What is it? Doris is nervous because it's not going around fast enough well, for her. No, you know, it's a... What? You got to stir it up a little bit? Is it okay? No, Doris, I am not going to stir it up a little bit, and I'm not going to go any faster. <laughs> <laughs> now, there it is. See? Startling overhead shot. It finally did it. And that's really about all you need. See? It's well mixed. There it is. That's Ooh. all you need to do. That's it right there. There's your butternut you squash. Do. All right, go ahead, Jonathan. Well, I'm sauteing as fast as I can. Oh, okay. Well, I, I got some more stuff I can do All here. Right, good. We'll go right ahead. Now, melt margarine in a saucepan over medium heat, add curry and cumin. And this calls for two teaspoons of curry powder, two teaspoons of curry. That's one and a half, two. And how much cumin? Uh, one teaspoon of ground cumin goes in there on top of the stove. Isn't that smell -a wonderful? Woo, boy, that smells great. It really does. Now let that saute for just about 30 seconds, it says. So let me mix it around here in the, in the margarine. Just a little bit. Ooh, wee. About 30 Ooh, seconds. that smells good. Doesn't it though? I'm oh, gonna pull it off because it's getting The aroma of that curry. Well, you know, you have to cook a real good curry a little bit to get all of the flavor and the aroma. Well, I don't think you have to worry to about the aroma it. coming it's out. Wonderful. Of it. Okay, there we go. So I gotta let that go for a couple of seconds. Then the next thing I gotta do is add the apple, the onion, and the garlic and saute for five more minutes. So. I have chopped up the amount of uh, apple that I need, and I've chopped it real fine, by the way, too. And that is about uh, one and a half cups peeled chopped Granny Smith apples. And I'm gonna put them in there now. I need maybe just a little bit more of those, and I might do another one here in a second. And then again, I might not. Just depends on how I feel. Uh -huh. You know, well, I'm yeah, a little rushed fine. for time today. So uh, maybe I will, maybe I won't. So anyway, that goes in there, and uh, it also calls for chopped onions, about, uh, oh, I don't know how much, a cup. Thank you for helping me out, darling. A cup. That's a little less than a cup, but that's okay. That's all I got today, and that goes in there, chopped onions, and a garlic clove, smashed and chopped. Oh, you did that so well. Whoosh. Larry, and you're getting professional. In. You know, I really am. You know, if I get any better, I'm thinking about going on television. Ah! <laughs> it's true. I just get so good at it. And so anyway, put that in there, and you want to saute that a little bit. Woo, you know that's going to be good. And so healthy, too, because as you'll notice, at no times have I touched my hair during this entire program. Uh -huh. 
true. Thing. All right, my head is hermetically sealed, sealed for your, for your protection. protection. Okay, go ahead, Johnson. All right, now I have soaked these garbanzo beans, chichi beans, chickpeas, whatever you want to call them, uh, for about 24 hours. And I'm going to add, this is two cups of dried beans, and I'm going to add all of this into the pan. Woo! Good heavens. Just look at that. Oh, nasty stuff. Oh. Nasty, nasty. Well, that's you know, enough it, garbanzo beans to set oh, you free. I'm afraid the devil will bury me with garbanzo beans. Where's my oh, lid? This is awful. I had it. <laughs> it's on your head. <laughs> <laughs> I need to cover that for a couple of minutes. <laughs> oh, they got your uh, joke number. Joke a minute around here. Uh huh. Joke a minute. All right, now boys. this has got to simmer for about 15 or 20 minutes. We'll never make it so. As soon as it boils, we'll add the rest of the ingredients. Oh, well, thank Uncle you, Larry. Judson. That's just what I needed, was you'd come back to me when I'm trying to figure out what I <laughs> want. <laughs> and bless you. Now I we have, have to add flour and, and tomato paste. Flour and tomato paste. And the tomato paste has to be three tablespoons. That's probably about one of these little eight-ounce cans, and we're going to add that at this point. Three tablespoons. One, two... Three. There you go. And flour. We need three tablespoons of flour. Goes in there at this point. One, two, three. That you know, goes I just in thought there. of something. What's that? What redeems this entire day? Uh huh. Is that here we are cooking with all this odiferous stuff? Oh, it is wonderful. It, it is, and the aroma is fine. But, you know, they're having another event in this place tonight, and all those high-toned people are going to have to come in here and <laughs> smell garbanzo beans. Well, that's fine. It serves them right. Mm. <laughs> serves them right. Okay, well, look my at that. Stuff Isn't is that beginning to... looking? Sort of a paste. Make it sort of a paste. While we're waiting for that to get done, you want to go to the cook system? Yeah, let's bring them in. I sure could use a cook oh, sister's yeah. break right about now. Uh, they're coming. I hear, hear their little soft heels. Because there's lots more good stuff to the... come on the show, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Don't go away. Here they are. Hey. Yeah. Sis. Yeah. Oh, you're already paying attention to me. I'm sorry. I'm trying to see over the glass. Oh. Your eyes sis. are looking funny anyway. Well. Dissipation setting in. Dissipation. It says here, remember... Remember, yeah, yeah. orange juice has 50 times the vitamin C of grape or apple juice. You're kidding. Oh, it is shocking. I could hardly... Oh. It does have a lot of sugar. Oh, well, I guess we'll have to be careful. I don't know what it means, Keep but that's... Keep your oranges to yourself. I'm Sister Cook. And I'm Tootsie Cook. And, and we're, we're the, the Cook sisters. sisters. Okay, next thing you got to do now is add to this mess your puree oh. of squash. And there's a great amount of it. Boy, I'll tell you, this is one colorful recipe. There's no two ways about that. You know, some of that gang we I met. I sound a little like Catherine Hepburn, don't you think? Some of that, that gang there. we met the other night at that fundraiser in Charlottesville, Virginia, would, would have a field day with your recipe. And yogurt. Because it, it looks like. And eight ounces of yogurt. <laughs> now, don't be commenting on it. We'll get, we'll get hair, lady. We'll be writing about those remarks. All right, put that back Ladies on the Ladies and heat. gentlemen, if you would like to respond to Hair Lady, <laughs> would you just All the write us a letter no. and, and put attention Hair Lady on the outside of it, and we will forward the letters <laughs> to her. <laughs> okay, there we go. Now, isn't that pretty? Put it back on the heat and turn your heat up because at this point now we're going to add, we have to add two cups, I think it is, of... Uh, low sodium chicken broth. <laughs> Two cans get added to that mess. Oh, oh, that's good. The lid's still in it. There we go. That's one. <laughs> and you need to stir it up a little bit and mix it before you put the other one in. There is no end to this recipe. You know, we're liable to have to go into another series here to get Doris on today. I'm oh, not sure. we'll get her on. Maybe she can tell a few jokes. Why don't you, uh, while I'm adding the second cup of uh, chicken broth, why don't you give your recipe? All righty. I'll be glad to. The chichi beans and brown rice. Uh, you need probably four cans of, of canned beans or two cups of dried beans cooked. Uh, a yellow onion two or three cloves of garlic, 
uh, one whole can, that's a 16 ounce or 15 wherever, of uh, chopped uh, tomatoes, some fresh ginger, uh, two tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil, brown rice, and parsley. So that's the chi-chi beans and brown rice. And Uncle Lair, you All right, now I have to take a couple of strips of ginger root. As you can see, I peeled it off. And I'm making these large because I've got to locate them. <laughs> You're supposed to take it out. And just take a couple of strips of ginger root and stick it down in there at this point. It's down in there, I believe it is. And you, you bring this to a, a boil. When do I add? Salt and nutmeg. Salt and nutmeg. All right, how much nutmeg, uh, Doris? Help me, Doris. Help me. Help me, Doris. Help, help me, Doris. What? Fourth of a teaspoon. Fourth of a teaspoon. You did that little thing there. Boom. There we go. That goes in there. And what else goes in? Three fourths teaspoon salt. A little salt goes in at this point also. Just a wee little bit. Boom. That goes in there. Stir that up. Now the last thing we're going to add to this after it comes to a boil is we're going to add our cooking sherry. Pale dry. Dry cooking sherry goes in this. And at that point, you, you, it's when you pull it off. This now has to come to a boil. And you don't uh -huh. add your sherry till the end because if you do, you'll boil out all the good stuff oh, out of no. it. You see, and you don't yeah, want to do that. No way. And then you'll also have to pull that ginger root strip out uh -huh. of there, however many of them there were. Did I miss something? Oh, bring to a boil stirring constantly. <laughs> it says. All right, let me give you my recipe. Let me give you my recipe while I'm stirring constantly. The curried butternut squash soup. Uh, butternut squash, two pounds. Actually, it depends on the size of them. I had to use two of them to get two pounds. Two teaspoons of curry powder, one and a half cups of peeled chopped Granny Smith apples, large clove of garlic minced, eight ounce carton of vanilla non-fat yogurt, two ten and a half ounces of cans of low sodium chicken broth, five thin slices of peeled ginger root, I put three large slices in, uh, just ad libbing as I'm so capable of doing, uh, one teaspoon of ground cumin, a cup of finely chopped onion, three tablespoons of flour, three tablespoons of tomato paste, three quarters teaspoon salt, quarter teaspoon ground nutmeg, two tablespoons of dry sherry will be added at the end. The margarine was for all your sauteing done early in the recipe. And there you have it. It's a long one. It really is. Now, what do you do all next? All right. Now, I'm going to add two, a can of chopped tomatoes. So here I go. There it goes. Chopped tomatoes, here I go. And stir that among the the garbanzo beans. And now I'm going to add two tablespoons of fresh ginger. And I'm using my little ginger grater that grates it right down into the pan. This is a swell little invention because it is ceramic and it cleans up real well and it grates a lot better than anything else. Larry, quit playing with the food. Hmm? Oh, uh -huh. he's... Oh, I was trying to get that cork out. That darn cork won't come out. Oh, how embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> well, are you at a point at this point? Well, go we ahead. The lovely Doris? Go here? ahead. Doris is just bucking to get in here. So, it's time to get out the Doris mic. Don't you think I'm cute in this, Doris? Right. I'm, I'm uh, actually doing my hair. Well, I, and I know you keep a clean head, so you really don't have to do uh, that. I keep a clear head and a clean head right. at all times. <laughs> okay, Let I me tell you, there are three <laughs> flea circuses out there that, that was casted from black. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I had to I'm having to continue to stir her while I hold her microphone. Corn custard. And it says five fresh eggs at room temperature, and I did get five fr uh, fresh eggs. I got them right off the farm, practically right out of the chicken. I believe that. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it took a lot of spices, a half a teaspoon each of nutmeg, cinnamon, ginger, allspice, and ground cloves, one and a half cups of sugar, and I made one with the sugar and one with sugar substitute. Oh, for heaven's and, sake. Uh, well, a teaspoon of vanilla, two and a half cups of corn, one pint, half and half, which could be omitted. So I omitted that with the uh, low sugar one. What did you admit? The half and half. To strangling that chicken? Oh, you omitted. Oh, okay. Go two ahead. cups 
of milk and half a stick of butter melted. Now I didn't tell you how to put this all together. You take the uh, the, the milk, eggs, and the um, spices, but I didn't tell you what to do with the butter and the, the uh, sugar, so I just sort of added it in a little bit later on. And then you have to bake in a 325 oven in a pan of water for 45 minutes. And it took longer with the bigger one, and of course I was trying to cook both of them at the same time. And I thought about using the fake or substitute eggs or whatever you want to call them in the one here with the sugar substitute, but last week Laban told me I was supposed to follow the recipe. <laughs> it doesn't say anything about <laughs> using a fake egg in here, but it might work because I think with all the spices you have in it, you uh, wouldn't notice that they were not real eggs. Hmm. So I guess it'll be okay. I don't know. Well, I hope right. so. Well, thanks for coming well, by, well, Doris, and welcome. so long. Come back again next week. Now, uh, huh? You're not finished? <laughs> no, I said I have to. Uh, Come back next week. <laughs> now, the next thing I have to do, I brought this to a boil, stirring constantly, even while Doris was blathering on to my left. Next thing you got to do is pull those ginger strips out. I have three <laughs> of them in there, and I got to get them out of there. It why is that, do that funny? I don't know why. I can't find them. They have disappeared. Well, if they come into a bowl, ladies and gentlemen, you just... Miss Manners would tell you, you reach down with your little forefingers and pick them out. There's, there's the other one. There's another one. It is. Isn't that a pretty soup? Now, at this point, you have to add the secret ingredient. That calls for two tablespoons dry sherry. One, two. Anyway, that goes in there at this point, and that's after you pull it off of the heat. Otherwise, it dissipates. And we oh, there's that third one. Thank heavens I found it. All right. So I got it's all like the... leaving the bay leaf in. It doesn't taste good when you get hold. Well, that's it. right. But it's big enough that you're certainly going to see it if it's you know if it's there. So anyway, that's that's your soup. Believe it or not, I finally got it done. I can't believe it. I've actually accomplished this recipe today. <sighs> Perhaps oh. I should cover my head with plastic more often. All right. Now here is the brown rice. Look Ooh. for it in your grocery store Pretty. near the, the regular rice. And uh, this is a, a one that has been converted, uh, and that means it's been partially cooked. So it doesn't take, it's not instant, but it doesn't take as long as regular brown rice does. And I'm going to go over and serve some of this on our plates, Lair, while you're finishing up. Well, I am finished up. I have taken this lovely soup and I have dipped it and I'm going to now take it over to the table and we're going to give it a try. Well, wait just a minute. Well, we certainly have a lot of large dishes in the kitchen today. Now, which is which on this rice pudding? Huh? Which is which, Doris? I'm just going to go sit down. Oh, no, we've gotten tangled up in our... Get over cords. here. I'm coming as fast as I can. All right, give me a little... Now, do you put this garbanzo <laughs> oh, on, on top, of the, top rice. of the rice? Thank you. Now, would you like two scoops? No, or... no, no. <laughs> oh, and I forgot I was supposed to put some... Let me get some parsley. on it. Well, I'm just going to try the one of these closest to me. It certainly is rather gelatinous. Well, th thank you, Levin, <laughs> just throwing the stuff <laughs> at me. All right, let me do this. Well, why don't you try the soup while I'm trying to get this stuff Oh, up. I'm trying to put the garnishy on the... Well, doing it from across the room, Laban, uh, uh, while hysterical uh, is... Uh, there you are. All right. Oh. It's just about I ruined me. I just this day. <laughs> <laughs> well, what do you think of that soup, Johnson? Let me get it on my palate. <laughs> well, I think it's pretty good. Pretty daggone good, Mr. Black. Well, you know, it isn't bad at all, is it? Mm -mm. Right? Good. Let me try this garbanzo surprise that you've done. Mm. How is it? Mm, it's pretty good. It's okay. not... I mean, the flavor isn't going to hit you over the head. It's a little tame. But it's good. Well, good. I'm going to try the corn, whatever it was, custard. Mm -hmm. It's a little sweeter than I like my custard, but yep. it's good. It's a good meal. 
and I can hardly wait to get my head out from underneath this I thing. Know. I believe my hair will be ruined forever. A lot of people said it was ruined before I ever put it on there. Y'all come back again. It'll be straight as a poker.